Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a pair of crappie brakes using a PWM or digital speed controller with a remote. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. This is the main part I'm going to be using in this project. This is a 12 volt, 100 amp continuous, 200 amp surge PWM or digital speed controller. Now it is bi-directional and these are the components to it. This is your speed controller potentiometer and this right here is your directional switch which I will end up replacing and it's position forward, neutral or standby and then reverse and I'm going to be using the standby part of this as the off switch and it also has a little percentage power meter this is where you connect your positive and negative from the battery and your motor positive and negative negative. and what I'm going to do since I'm making dual crappy brakes I'm going to double up both trolling motors into the motor connectors right here and because it's rated for 100 amps continuous it should be just fine. Now in order to make this project work what I'm going to do is extend the wiring for the potentiometer and for the directional switch using this six conductor wiring and that'll allow me to make a remote with both these components so you can take it up and mount it where it's going to be easier to use. I'm going to start with the remote and this is a little project box and it's about four by two and a half inches and this is a little PG7 gland nut which I'm going to use to run the cabling through and I'm going to drill a hole and mount it on one side like that and then this is the switch that I'm going to swap out for the directional one that came with the PWM because this is marine rated and then I'm going to drill holes and install the pot here and then the new switch there okay this is the bottom of the box and I have the gland nut in there this is the top of the box and I have the pot here and that's the new switch there with all the wiring and if you notice I haven't cut the wiring yet because I want to make sure everything's gonna fit and one thing I'm going to say just to remind you that before you start cutting and splicing these wires to extend them make sure you run it through any holes through any box that you may be mounting your components in because if you do it afterwards it's not gonna fit right this is another tip I want to give you this is my six conductor wire and you can see I have a red black yellow and orange white and green but coming out of the PWM I have a yellow red black and a yellow red black so you gotta make sure that you keep those separated so if you ever have to do any rewiring you know what goes to what so you can do it a couple of ways you can leave some of this uncovered when you put it in your complete box and you'll see the difference in colors when you connect them or you can write yourself a little guide and keep it on the inside of your box just so you know for sure this is the completed box now what I ended up using is an Apache 2800 box here that I got at Harbor Freight and the reason I use that is because I just happen to have it and I used a lot of leftover parts from other projects on this project and on top here I have a 70 amp waterproof circuit breaker and then coming out through here is the positive and negative connections that are going to go to the battery coming out here is the remote right here and this is the pot for the speed controller and this is the directional switch opening it up 
There's the PWM in there. And you can see my wiring in here that I spliced together. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see the different colored wires. And then what I did here, these are the motor connections. And I doubled up both the positive onto the motor and both the negative onto the motor so I can run both of these at the same time. And I made my connections here by first stripping and twisting the wires, then soldering them, and then using the shrink fit tubing over it to make sure that everything worked fine. And these are the connectors I used for the motors, and those are rated at 50 amps each. So I'm going to put everything together and go ahead and give it a field test. I'm going to be using two brand new Newport Vessels 36 pound thrust 12 volt trolling motors and the first thing I'll do after I unpackage each of them is remove the top plate of the head unit. In order to save time, I've already removed the six screws that hold the top of the head unit plate on. And what you have here now is the internal switch, and you're not going to need any of these. So what I do when I remove them is I just cut with a little piece of the wire still on there on these connectors. That way, if I ever want to use the switch again, I know what goes to what. So once I take everything out, it'll just be down to the shaft and the wiring coming out of the shaft. This is a view with the head unit removed and I forgot to mention that there is a bolt you need to take out of the shaft here and then it slides up and over after you've cut all the wiring. The white and the yellow you don't need to worry about. You can just cap off and put them down the shaft like I do. So the only ones you're going to be using are the positive red and the negative black coming out of the trolling motor shaft. Okay, so I have my box connected to the battery and you can see that the trolling motors are all set up. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and then test the remote. Here's the remote. Standby or off. Opposite direction. Got a nice hum to it. All I have to do now is drop it in the water and take some readings. Okay, here's my DC amp meter right there, and I'm going to be testing the motor on the right to see how much it draws. Forward direction. Yeah, I wish I had deeper water right now, but I don't. About 20 amps. Opposite direction. About 21 amps. Okay, I'm going to try it on the left motor. Okay, here's the amp meter right there. Hopefully you can read it. I'm going to call it off. Forward. About 19 amps. Opposite direction. About 23 amps.
Now I'm going to test the point of having the crappie brakes anyways. So what I'm going to do is set a speed in the forward direction. Like that. Turn it off. And so now when you're rolling around and you want to hit the brakes, all you do, hit that, and then they go immediately. Just like they're supposed to do. So let's try it in the opposite direction. There's some speed in the opposite direction. I'll turn it off. I'm going to hit the brakes. And everything works like it should. So that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. Thank you.